Now I'm going to let you listen to a tape phone conversation between Cleve Davis, who is a member of the temple who wants to get out. He wants to get out of this cult and he wants to escape. And another gentleman named C.J. Jackson, who's a counselor, and um, he's going to try to convince Cleve to stay in the cult. And, and he, he's the spiritual abuser. And, he, and Cleve only wants really three things. One, he wants to leave. He wants to get his things. And third, he, he wants his teeth repaired at the dentist. Um, and there's one uh, fourth thing. He wants to see his daughter. Of course, he, he submits and admits to himself and to um, the counselor that they're not going to let him do that. So that's a moot point. Uh, I, I couldn't even imagine somebody telling me I can't see my daughter but nonetheless let's listen to this tape and you decide and listen to how the counselor uh, twists Cleve's thoughts and uses them against him and this is similar very similar to what a spiritual abuser will do to you if you go to them alone you let's listen your daughter. Huh? you care about your daughter well you know how you can get I love her. my child and I feel like that Y'all not gonna be cooperative and let me see or anything like this. But anyway, I still won't cause you any trouble or anything, man. But uh... okay, of course, this is very difficult to listen to. Here's a father not able to see his own daughter. Now listen to how the counselor twists his words around to be able to throw back to the abused and try to get the abuser to realize that it is his fault. He's the one that is causing this difficulty. He's the one that's not doing the right thing. Now listen to how he does this. You chose to threaten what my daughter, what your daughter, what all of the elderly people, all of the children here need and are depending on for survival. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And all of those Okay, so when you talk to a spiritual abuser, they're always going to throw it back to make it your fault. Now you need to remember that. It's always going to be your fault. And you have to fight against that. Your mind has to fight against that temptation to feel guilty about uh, calling out abnormal behavior. What's abnormal behavior here? Well, he can't see his daughter. You know, he can't get his stuff. He can't get out of the temple. He uh, wants to have his teeth worked on and move on in his life. And the, the temple counselor won't let him do that. So that's the abnormal behavior. And so the counselor throws it back at him and says, hey, you're the one that's causing all these problems. Now you're going to see another technique. This technique is called love bombing. He's going to come back to him and say, well, you know, we really love you. We really want you to come back. So listen to this. Because as I said once before, Father is the most loving human being on the face of the earth. Uh -huh. And if you get yourself together, if you prove yourself together, doggone it, I'm not in a position to speak for him, but doggone it, you know how forgiving, how loving he is. And you know that the whole thing that we've gone through has been, first of all, for you to get you together. Would you tell Alright, so you see how he's love bombing. You know, this is all about you. We're trying to help you. We're trying to get your life together. And if you only come back and do what we say, then, you know, your life's going to be so much better. But um, the problem is, is that Cleve doesn't want to do that, you see. And he's doing the unthinkable. He is challenging their authority. He's saying, hey, listen, I've got things I've got to do. I'm going to do these things and you're just going to have to live with it. And they cannot stand that. They cannot stand that. And then uh, later on in the tape, you're going to hear where he goes after um, him for doing that. In fact, you know, it's been requested that you leave town. Well, I can't leave until my dental work is completed. Now, this is just it. I have to stay here until my dental work is completed. Now, I'm not Huh? When is that? I don't know. Whenever the doctor finishes it, I'm at Dr. Fusion. Deborah knows where it is. There's a dental card on her address, and she knows where the dental office is. And I ain't going no place now. I understand me until this is finished. I'm not afraid on the streets, and I'm not trying to hurt nobody, but I will. All right, so now Cleve has drawn the line in the sand, 
and maybe you're one of those who draws a line in the sand you say hey listen I am not going to obey your authority I want to question your authority so the pastor does something abnormally and you think and you go up and you stand up and you say hey you know why are you doing this maybe you do that in front of a business meeting or you do that in front of a, a a deacon's meeting or some other kind of uh, public forum and the pastor immediately begins to defend himself and he's going to use all the techniques that he has to uh, punish you hopefully punish you enough so that you leave the church and you don't cause him any more trouble and you can see here how Cleve you know has drawn the line in the sand he says okay I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna listen to this anymore and uh, the counselor now says, okay, now you know I'm going to have to report this. Now, because this is serious now, he, he's not obeying uh, the authority, you know, and so I'm going to re report this, and there's going to be re repercussions. You're going to have to pay for your disobedience. And, of course, Cleve uh, blows it off and says, well, you know, all I'm trying to do is get my stuff and get out of here, and that's all I want. And I, he knows that he's not going to be allowed to see his daughter, which is heartbreaking. So listen to this. Now, of course, I'm going to report this conversation, oh, no. and if any decisions are to be made, uh, if anything else is to be cited based on, on, on the report and all, but then uh, others might want to contact you. That's the only reason for getting this done. Well, I mean, look here, could you contact me in L.A. then? Yeah, well, well where to reach you in L.A.? Well, I mean, you can call there, Colette. I mean, I should be there tomorrow sometime. Tomorrow sometime, okay. Yeah, call me at L.C. please. I'll go by there and wait. I mean, for you to call me, okay? Why would you put L.C. in that position, man? Well, I ain't in no position. I have no place to go, man. I gotta go someplace until I leave. Well, don't you have another brother or sister you can I don't have nobody, man. Yeah. And you're trying to take all I got is my only brother I got, man. Hmm. And you're not putting okay, me in position. what's L.C.'s number, man? Huh? What's L.C.'s number? 299-2551. Now, I have to go there because this is the only friend I got, man. Two five five one. Yeah, and I ain't bringing no hassle to you. Mm. I just don't have no place to go and no money. That's all. Cause I don't need it all my money. Okay, well look, I'm gonna have to run on. Huh? Okay, and thanks very much. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll see you later. What you're about to listen to now is what the FBI and others have labeled the death tape. That is, this the tape of the final. Um, sermon of Jim Jones. Now you're going to notice in this sermon that he is going to first love bomb the people. He's going to tell them how much he loves them. And then he's going to explain that they were betrayed. Now history and you know research has shown us that he was the one behind the uh, the killing of the congressman. And he, he set all this up so he was not betrayed. He set this all up. Then finally he's going to say that there's no other choice. And you'll, you'll hear this again and again. There's no other choice. And then he says this is the best option for our babies. That is killing them is the best option. Because if you do not allow them to die they are going to be tortured. Which is of course not true. And then you have the perversion of the scripture. Where he takes the word of God, twists it to uh, convince the people that death is the right thing to do and then again he says over and over there's no other way and then you hear the crowd heartily approving that decision again he has worked the crowd the crowd is in a how very much i've loved you what is going to happen how very much i've tried my best to give you the good life But in spite of all of that I've tried, a handful of our people with their lives have made our life impossible. There's no way to detach ourselves from what's happened today. Not only we're in a compound situation, not only are there those who have left and committed the betrayal of the century, some have stolen children from others and they're in pursuit right now to kill them because they stole their children. And we, we are sitting here waiting on a powder keg. I don't think this is what we want to do with our babies. I don't think that's what we had in mind to do with our babies. It was said by the greatest of prophets 
from time immemorial. No man lay, takes my life from me, I lay my life down. So to, to sit here and wait for the catastrophe that's going to happen on that airplane, it's going to be a catastrophe. It almost happened here. Almost happened. The congressman was nearly killed here. This is Christine Miller. She is the hero of the People's Temple. If you never heard of her, you need to remember her name, Christine Miller. One time, Jim Jones put a gun to her head, and they were arguing, and he says, You shut up, you shut up. And Christine Miller said, You may shoot me, but you're going to respect me. You no, know, you, Christine, it's just not, it's not worth living like this. Not worth living like this. I think that there were too few who left for 1,200 people to give them their lives for those people that left. You know how many left? Mm, 20 odd. That's, that's a small... 20 odd. Come, come, 20 come odd. Compared to what year? 20 odd. But what's going to happen when they don't leave? I wasn't speaking about that plane. I was speaking about the plane for us to go to Russia. How do, <laughs> to Russia. Do you think Russia's going to want... Uh, no, they're not going to... Well, I don't see it like that. I mean, I feel like that as long as there's life, there's hope. That's my faith. Well, some, everybody dies. <laughs> Someplace that hope runs out because everybody dies. I haven't seen anybody yet didn't die. And I like to choose my own kind of death for a change. I'm tired of being tormented to hell. That's what I'm tired of. Tired of it. Can I ask you a question? What do you think was Christine Miller's greatest need at that moment? I mean, out of over 900 people, you would think that one other person would say, yeah, you know, maybe Christine is right. Maybe we don't have to die. Christine's greatest need was to have somebody walk up to her, put their arms around her, and stand in defiance and in agreement with her conclusion. And maybe you're at church and somebody stands up and says, hey, you know, this isn't quite right. Maybe we should do it this way. And they're shouted down by the crowd. But in your heart, you know that they're probably right. You know, maybe you can be the one who stands up, walks over, put your arm around that person and say, hey, you know, I stand with you. I stand with your conclusion. Maybe that person is you. And so the next time you see somebody acting strangely, doing abnormal behavior, and somebody defies them, maybe God is calling you to stand up and stand next to them. Thanks for listening.